students in this video we are going to find the rate of convergence of newton epsilon method as you have seen in regular fallacy method regular fallacy is surely convergent but newton epsilon method is conditionally convergent in another video we will produce the condition for that convergence in this video we will show that newton epsilon method converges quadratically Let us write the formula for Newton Epsilon method. X n plus one equals to X n minus f of X n divided by f dash of X n. Now let us take alpha be a root of any function f x that is algebraic or transcendental equation. Now, uh, let us take a small quantity epsilon n, a small quantity which differs from alpha. Okay, so if xn is alpha plus epsilon n, then then xn plus one equals to alpha plus epsilon n plus one. Now let us put these two values in this equation. Say equation one in this equation one. So, in the left hand side, we will have alpha plus epsilon n plus 1 equals to, in right hand side, we will have alpha plus epsilon n minus f of xn. So, f of xn is alpha plus epsilon n divided by f dash xn. So, this is f dash alpha plus epsilon n plus 1. Now, in both sides, alpha and alpha will be cancelled. So, epsilon n plus 1 equals to epsilon n and minus f of alpha plus epsilon n and divided by f dash of alpha plus epsilon n plus 1. Now, we can expand these two by Taylor's expansion. So, in right hand side it will be epsilon n minus and in the numerator we will have after expanding in Taylor's expansion we will have f of alpha plus epsilon n f dash alpha plus plus epsilon n square by 2 f double dash alpha plus dot dot up to infinity divided by divided by f dash alpha plus sorry uh, there is a mistake here uh, look it is uh, xn so xn is alpha plus epsilon n so f dash alpha plus epsilon n only and here also epsilon n only ok so f dash alpha plus epsilon n f double dash alpha plus epsilon n square by 2 f triple dash alpha 2 
infinity okay and now this f alpha is zero why because and because alpha is a root and if you put the, this root in the main functional equation then obviously that will be uh, zero so f alpha is zero here we can write f alpha is zero so therefore in the right hand side we'll have epsilon n minus above it is epsilon n f dash alpha plus epsilon n square by 2 f double dash alpha plus dot dot and below it is f dash alpha plus epsilon n f double dash alpha plus dot dot okay now Let us take one epsilon n common from numerator. So we will have f dash alpha plus epsilon n by 2 f double dash alpha. And let us truncate the other terms, higher order terms. And below it is f dash alpha plus epsilon n f double dash alpha now if we do the LCM below we will have f dash alpha plus epsilon n f double dash alpha and here it is epsilon n f dash alpha plus epsilon n square f double dash alpha epsilon n square f double dash alpha minus and here we will have epsilon n f dash alpha and then minus epsilon n square by 2 f double dash alpha okay So you see, below it is f dash alpha plus epsilon n f double dash alpha and above and these two terms are cancelled. So here epsilon n square f double dash alpha minus epsilon n square by 2 f double dash alpha. If you do this calculation then you will have epsilon n square uh, by 2 f double dash alpha so that 2 let us take in the denominator and above it is epsilon n square f double dash alpha now it is epsilon n square f double dash alpha and below let us take common f dash alpha then inside we have 1 plus epsilon n f double dash alpha by f dash alpha so this is epsilon n square f double dash alpha divided by 2 f dash alpha and 1 plus epsilon n f double dash alpha by f dash alpha power minus 1 
again we can expand it by binomial theorem and then we will take the first term only then it will be it will be epsilon n square by 2 f double dash alpha divided by f dash alpha so look here we shows that at each iteration absolute error is absolute error in the left hand side it was epsilon n plus 1 absolute error I'm showing you this is epsilon n plus 1 so absolute error is proportional to the square of the previous error and hence this convergence is quadratic so at the first iteration if we have an correct answer to one decimal place then it should be correct to two places at the second iteration to four places of decimal at the third iteration in this way it will go on that means the number of correct decimal places at each iteration is doubled almost therefore this method converges very rapidly and it converges quantity proved